Welcome to the Unrest Podcast. I'm Madeline Green. And I'm Caitlin Stansel. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and hit subscribe so you can get all the content as soon as it posts. Even this on-camera version of our episodes, you can subscribe on YouTube as well to check out the latest episodes of our Real Life Haunts. So if you can't tell, we're a little spooky tonight. (laughs) We are dressed as our mascot, Boozy. Yes, a little, two little boozies here to say hello. (laughs) So on today's episode of the Unrest Podcast, we're going to jump back a few weekends ago when we visited our friend Madison. She's actually been on the show before, so you can go back and listen to her story. But we visited Madison and she took us on a ghost tour in Athens, Georgia. I was telling Caitlin before we started this episode that You know, we've done ghost tours all over from Charleston to Savannah, a few other places, but it's very rare to do one in a really small town where you would think they didn't have a lot of ghost stories. And I felt like Athens did. This ghost tour really showed out. When I think about ghost tours, I sort of compare them to the ones we've been on in Charleston. And this one was right up some of my favorite ones that we've ever been on. I felt like there was a lot of new fact. I don't know if I'd call them facts or just like educational parts that I had never heard on a ghost tour. So the first one that I really clued into and I was like, okay, that's different was the bricks of the foundry. He told us about how those bricks were handmade and you could see fingerprints in some of those bricks and you could put your fingers like in those prints. And that was just really neat. And I had never heard that from any other tour before. Yeah, that was an awesome sort of connection to the past to get to sort of lay your hands where someone else's had been many, many, many decades before. There was even that one like partial palm print that you could see, which was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was definitely like you couldn't write off that it was something else besides someone's hand or fingerprints. And what I loved about his ghost tour too is that you could tell he had done a lot of research, like his own research. He had done his own interviews with people, asking them about their experiences and sort of weaving that into the stories that he was telling and also a lot of research on historical events that had happened in that area ghostly sightings could be connected to. So it really kind of felt like a mixture of like a history tour and a ghost tour all in one. And those are honestly my favorite kinds. You know, it it didn't feel cheesy, like some of the ones you can go on. I didn't feel cheesy at all from any of it. He was very, very, like you said, knowledgeable about everything. But also us being skeptics, like we usually are, we went and asked some of the workers at one of the hotels, like, okay, is he jerking our chain or is he being serious with some of the stories and they agreed that some weird stuff did happen in the hotel that they couldn't explain so I thought that made everything even more relevant and and felt like he was you know very truthful in his ghost storytelling yeah and so his tour sort of centered around this hotel there in Athens called the graduate and I totally forgot about this so I'm so glad that you brought this up Madeline but um Afterwards, I went and talked to this lady that was working the front desk there. And I was like, hey, listen, he keeps talking about um, this hotel, like people getting phone calls from hotel rooms that are empty. Has that like ever happened to you here? And he was like, he's saying what? (laughs) I was like, yeah, he on the ghost tour said that, you know, you have a couple of hotel rooms that are supposedly really haunted and you guys sometimes get calls from these rooms and no one's supposed to be in them. And she was like, I mean, I don't know that I've had that from one of the rooms, but, and I was like, okay, please tell me more. And she said that, so the fitness center of this hotel was this like old house from like the 1800s that the owner of um, the hotel establishment had like basically transported down this river to this area so it could be a part of the like establishment, I guess. And so they had turned it into a fitness center and it's just like this house in the middle of all the rooms. Really kind of interesting how it's all set up. But she said one night, like super late at night, phone kept ringing from the fitness center and they would answer, but then no one would say anything. She finally got to a point where she was like, okay, I'm just going to go 
over there to check it out because like what if someone's hurt and that's why they're not like saying anything when I answer the phone well she goes in there and there is no one there (laughs) so she was like I don't know what's going on here and like I try not to really put too much thought into it because I don't want to sort of invite that thing in but she was like there's definitely some weird stuff that happens around this hotel in Athens so yeah I loved that part of the ghost tour and he also said a bunch of other things that you know, I had not heard of, and Caitlin actually did a little investigating herself on one of the things that he talked about. Before I get into that, I also loved how he, like, really intertwined just interesting tidbits and, like, things that he found interesting in doing his research. And I wrote down some of them. Like, one was this quote he had from Margaret Atwood. He was talking about how what he loves about ghost stories is that it's sort of a way to live on after you die. And this quote from her said, we all become stories. And I just think back to when we started this podcast, like that was when, one thing that we just really loved about ghost stories is just like these connections you make and how like spiritual and personal these stories are. So I love that. And then I also wrote down, he said, Edgar Allan Poe called ghost visitants. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love sort of that idea of ghostly experiences being visitors and calling them visitants um and then speaking of things that he mentioned on this ghost tour that just were sort of interesting tidbits and before we get to our real life haunt so this kind of leads into it I'm doing kind of a little haunted history going back to how we started this podcast a little bit but one thing he talked about was this idea of 21 grams and I had never heard of this before apparently there's this idea that souls have weight And there was this experiment that happened to find out sort of, or like to prove that souls exist in like a physical state. So I'm going to give you a little backstory on that first and where this 21 grams came from. So in 1907, there was this physician, this is like real history that happened. Um, There was even a story in the New York times about this experiment that he did. Um, But his name was Duncan McDougall. And you can really probably question the methods he used for this experiment, but I like the idea and concept and where he was going with it. So his theory was that souls have this physical weight and he wanted to sort of prove out that when you die, your soul leaves your body. And he was going to prove this by attempting to measure or sort of weigh the mass that a human lost at the moment of death. He thought this was going to be how he physically showed and proved that souls are a real concept, a real thing. So he did this experiment again back in 1907. So just sort of think about science at the time back then. It was already a little kooky, um, but also like they didn't have the sort of technological advancements we have today. So their scales probably are not quite as accurate. There's probably not a real way to know the point at some at which someone like actually dies. So there's a lot of questioning about just how valid this experiment was and his methods. I won't go into all of the sort of nuances around it because he probably is not the best scientist around. But anyways, he tested six patients. Um, They were from this nursing home and they were all sort of on the verge of death. When they were sort of getting to the moment of dying, he basically had the people helping him put the bed that they were in on a scale and weighed it. Well, out of those six patients, one lost 21.3 grams or three quarters of an ounce. I won't talk about the others because that's going to make you question the science of it (laughs) to just tell you how flawed it probably was. But he really held on to this one factoid, (laughs) I guess, that came out of the experiment. And that's sort of where this like 21 grams is the weight of a soul came from. And it really sort of popularized this concept that souls are sort of a physical part of our being. Um, Because when this person died and they were on the scale, the scale changed weights by just 21.3 grams. So again, he was obviously trying to, to prove this out. And there was an article written in the New York Times at the time um, in 1907. And I love the headline, the way they wrote it, made me laugh, but it was like, soul has weight physician thinks <laughs> <laughs> he sort of like popularized this concept of 
a soul being a physical part of your body that when you die, it leaves your body. And he sort of, in his own way, maybe kind of pseudo proved that out. So I just thought that was such an interesting concept. And they mentioned it on the ghost tour. And what's funny is like, as we were wrapping up the ghost tour, you know, we were talking to a couple of these other ladies that were on there about how we have a ghost podcast. We like spooky things. And I was like, hey, like, do you have a ghost story that you want to share? And also Madeline, chime in here. But I love when you ask people that and they're like, no, not really. But and then they tell you like the best story. (laughs) Of course, like he talked about that on the tour. He gave like everybody an option. Like, does anyone have a story to share? Of course, there was this one little kid who shared a terrible story that I think was a lie. But um (laughs) same thing with these with these ladies that we were walking back to town with at first she was saying you know I don't have a story and then it turned into well I did have this one experience and and honestly like this was such a great story and we are bringing it to you here now this is Kate's story and it has to do with sort of this concept of what happens at that moment of your passing so take a listen So when I was little, um, I was probably about like maybe 10 or 11. Uh, My grandfather was very ill, but we didn't know how ill. We went to go see him in the nursing home and he looked horrible. And that was the first moment we knew how bad it was. Um, And he just looked really like shriveled from what he would look like normally. And um, it was right before Christmas. And I remember telling him because we were trying to think of things to help him cheer him up. We're like, we'll bring you a little Christmas tree and all this type of stuff. And then when we left him, I went with my mom um, in the car and my two sisters went in another car and we were driving away and I was just closing my eyes and I saw my grandfather, but he was not old. He was young and he didn't speak to me like his mouth didn't move, but I could feel him saying, it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. I'm okay. That's all I just remember happening. And so... I got home and I told my mom, you know, as soon as we got home, I said, I think granddaddy just passed. And I told her about this. And then when I talked to my sisters, they said the exact, they had the same vision of him as really young and that he was saying the same things. And then the next morning, they, the nursing home called to tell us that he had passed in the night. And I think being little too, I was more open to the idea of like seeing like you know, in telling my mom, cause I was like, this is sort of weird, but you don't think about like death when you're little, you just don't. And I mean, we had assumed he was going to live till at least Christmas. So it was just sort of a unusual thing. And my mom says, she's like, I know that he died right when we left, even though they, we don't think anyone checked on him because it's like a nursing home, you know, no one checked to see if he was still alive until probably the next morning. But she's like, I really think that that's when he passed. Yeah, it's oh. almost like, you know, he, like, saw you guys, and he was like, okay. Like, he could let go. And that's what we think, too, is that he was waiting for us to come, and, like, he was holding on. And, um, yeah, my sisters and I and my mom, we all have the same thing. Like, well, you know, we'll, like, call each other. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll be like, I was just thinking about you. Or we try to call each other at the same time. Just, like, weird. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but it's, like, some weird connection, oh, you God. know. I, I think there are, like, energies, and I think that, like, that the energy gets trapped. So I do believe in ghosts. I don't really, like, I mean, I say it, and then, like, even at this experiment, or, like, this thing that happened to me, I'm always like, did it really happen? Like, my brain tries to rationalize it away of just, like, well, he was old. He was getting mm-hmm. sick. He was going to die. He was in a nursing home. Like, anyone would think that. Right. Yeah. So I think that, I mean, I do believe in it, just because too many weird things have happened to me in my life that I, I think that there's some type of energy that connects people and that we can like, we have some type of form after we die. And I I don't know if that like dissipates and goes away after a while or if it's like for a long time. First of all, I absolutely love that we got this story on the side road of Athens, Georgia. I mean, literally. (laughs) Cars driving by, we're headed to go get another drink at the bar and we get this amazing ghost story. But I can definitely relate to it because I talked in past episodes about having an experience like this when my aunt died. And I didn't know, you know, at the time that she had passed away, but I had had this very like overwhelming sadness, you know, just kind of come over me and just, I was just all of a sudden very, very sad and I couldn't explain it. 
my husband at the time he was my boyfriend was like you know what is wrong with you and I'm like I honestly have no idea I just feel extremely sad and then the next day this was like middle of the night wasn't it yeah I was like I want to say three or four in the morning Um, we were on our way home from Canada and you know at the time I didn't know but the next morning when I woke up after we finished our our driving because we had to do like ships of driving back home Winston. Winston. Oh my this is such a Sorry. serious part, Winston. Winston, this is very serious. Mommy has to talk for her podcast. So when I wake up, I had like 10, almost 20 missed calls. And I'm like, you know, something bad has happened. Um, and that's, I don't know if anybody's experienced that, but that's the worst feeling too. And so, you know, I called my stepmom and she told me that my aunt had passed away. And she was telling me like exactly when it was. And and it was around the same time that I had that feeling. And I'm like, wow, that's just so strange. And since then, I've realized I'm very susceptible to people's feelings and I can feel people's emotions. I never really thought about it before until then. And it's almost like people's emotions just overwhelm me. And sometimes I have to be like, take a step back and make myself not fall into you know, just being overwhelmed by somebody's emotions, whether they're sad or happy or, or whatnot. And so I can definitely relate to her story about her grandpa. It like immediately took me to that experience that you had. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like there has to be something to that too, that it was like validating kind of that someone else had, had had an experience like that, you know? Well, and when you think about, think about a life that you live on earth, you know, no matter how long or short it is, like it's a, it's a life, you're a person. And so it's so sad to think that people don't have that type of feeling when you do die. Like Mm -hmm. you don't actually feel it physically. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I I felt that way a few other times since then too. So I feel like there is definitely something to it. And I follow a guy on TikTok who goes into like detail of, you know, the different ways that people feel things, whether it's physically, mentally, um, there's just a, a bunch of different ways that you can feel certain things. And I guess mine is physically, I guess, right? Or would it be emotionally? I'm not sure. Maybe a I'm bit of both. both. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also like, and you and you can obviously speak towards this, but I would think it was sort of like a closure moment too. Like you sort of had this moment of like a goodbye because you yeah. weren't there when it happened, you know, but you sort of had this like connection to her in that moment of passing. Right. And whether it is or isn't, or whether you believe it or not, it is definitely something that when I think about her and think about her passing and how like devastated we all were and still are to this day, like it's something special that I kind of hold dear to me and her relationship. And it's just something sweet to kind of look on and be like, Oh, you know, maybe she was trying to tell me goodbye. Yeah, like you were sort of one of the last people that sort of felt her as that moment was happening. I love that. Um, Well, if you out there listening have a spooky story, a real life haunt, if you will, that you'd like to share with us, guess what? We are all ears, even though these boozy ghosts here recording (laughs) don't have ears. (laughs) You can reach out to us at the unrest podcast at gmail.com or... Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We have all the good social media things that are ruining today's society. So check us out there. (laughs) Also, we are super excited about our upcoming Halloween episode. So make sure you check in to the Unrest podcast for Halloween. Until next time. Unrest in peace. Okay. We we getting all these sheets because it's sweaty. (laughs) <laughs> My- <laughs> I can't wait to see what that looks like.